feel a little bit nervous and my hands are a little bit shaking. All the projects are so good and like, we go around discussing like who has good projects all the time, but everyone has and it's impossible to say anything about winning chances. Yeah, I hope everything's working. I'm quite excited. They are all talking about the ultimate science competition, the European Union contest for young scientists. And this year, in Copenhagen, the event turns 20, a good reason for a glamorous party. But before, there will be seven days of tough challenges. This is not only science, this is also a competition. And obviously in a competition there are winners. So you can feel the tension in the room and you can feel the people to, to, to start to, to prepare themselves for this game. I don't know if we'll get some prize. Samuel Rispel's key to success is endurance. The young Frenchman's home is in Saxel, a small village close to the Swiss border. I'm uh, living uh, in, um, in the mountain in France. Uh, it's uh, very, very beautiful, but um, it's uh, lost of civilization, so uh, to go to school, uh, is, there is uh, 30 kilometers. He and his project partner, Michel Sebrion, have just moved to Lyon to start their studies at the university. But they are back home now to prepare for the contest. Their motivation for going into science is to improve green energy production. Finalement, on est où d'un point de vue mécanique pour le... Pour le cric Ouais, pour le cric, tout depuis le moteur. Ah bah, le couplage, il est fait, là. Ok. Tu verras, c'est sympa. Et puis, aujourd'hui, j'aimerais bien faire, tu sais, les carrants U, là. Ouais, ok. Pour pouvoir associer le moteur au cric. Ça Moi aussi, peut-être... Enfin, moi, j'essaie de devoir pour fixer les, les capteurs. They drive to their former school in Anamas, which has given the young engineers a room where they can work and prepare for the occasion. This is the Sunflower Project, a sensor-controlled solar module that orients itself towards the sun. This movement results in a higher yield of electric energy production. The 17-year-olds have already won the national competition with this prototype. So uh, we have realized a system of, tr of solar tracking. So imagine this is the sun. The sun has a movement from the east to the west. So the model will follow, will follow the sun during the day. Uh, on the machine, um, I work uh, more than 100 uh, hours. Hmm. <laughs> Certainly, may, maybe a thousand, I don't know, because uh, there is uh, two years we realize it, so uh, it's very, very long time, but we like it. <laughs> They're mental. Physics teacher Philippe Schaffer. He strongly believes that the pair will earn a good ranking in Copenhagen. Bien sûr qu'ils ont une chance. Quand ils ont démarré, euh, la veille de leur concours de sélection, le, rien ne marchait. Deux heures avant le concours, rien ne marchait. Et puis, euh, parce qu'ils sont forts, parce qu'ils sont autonomes, parce qu'ils sont volontaires, ils ont réussi à faire marcher quelque chose. Depuis, ils ont été donc euh, sélectionnés pour Copenhague, ils ont amélioré leur projet euh, de manière extraordinaire, et bien sûr qu'ils ont une chance. Okay, one more. I think solar energy... Uh, it's one of the best uh, energy who exists now. Uh, it's more ecologic and it, it permits uh, to, to don't use uh, nuclear, which is very dangerous. Lisa Schova from Münster, Germany, is used to competition. She's a striker in the regional soccer league and she loves green. That's why she and a schoolfellow have developed a fast method for the detection of plant damage. 
and not just on soccer fields, of course. The green on the soccer field, at least it looks green, which is a good sign. But um, yeah, I can't say too much right now, but uh, we would have to test it uh, with our experimental setup to really tell you about it. At her high school in Münster, Lisa has been actively involved in the science club for the past five years. Together with her contest partner, Anja Masola, she has developed the project When Leaves Turn Red. Now we'll test uh, these leaves if we can uh, detect any plant damage. Uh, we have this experiment. And, uh, here in the box, uh, there's a binocular, it's like a microscope. And we have different uh, filters to put on. And uh, we're trying to detect some uh, fluorescence. And this fluorescence um, is used as a quantitative indicator for the plant damage. If the plant is sick, the two girls make it glow red, a fast and easy method to evaluate damage. With the help of a digital camera, Lisa and Anya can demonstrate the fluorescence. This cress was treated with sodium chloride for four days. The increase in fluorescence can easily be seen. He is a retired teacher. However, Johann Hopman is still passionate about science. He has known Lisa since she was 10. Lisa is very neugierig and uh, verbindet das mit uh, einer allgemeinen Begabung für Naturwissenschaften. Und nicht nur für Naturwissenschaften, aber speziell für Naturwissenschaften. Darum geht es ja jetzt hier in der Forscher AG. Und dort zeigt sie auch noch viel Geduld. Und ich denke, das ist die Voraussetzung für eine Forscherlaufbahn. When Lisa's passion for science is tested, she rises to the challenge. Uh, we spent a lot of time in this project and uh, some nights and I think the whole last uh, winter holidays, like every day we were at school and at night time we were writing for our project and yeah, it took some time. <laughs> Science personally for me means um, yeah, being out of limits because you can yeah, go further and further and push yourself and yeah, try to find new possibilities to realize your ideas and yeah, it's good. I think it's good to meet all the other contestants which are coming from all over Europe, from the EU and um, yeah, you might find some new friends. Um, can ask them about their projects and yeah, I think it's interesting to talk to them. Yeah. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not really sure what's coming. Uh, I don't have many information and I don't know the other contestants, I don't know the other projects. For Lisa, training her mind and running on the field go hand in hand. I need the balance between soccer and science or um, yeah, mental work. And so for me it's really good when I've been working on my science project, when I can go on the sports field afterwards and have some fun with, uh, with my friends playing soccer. It's good for me. An away game without dad is no game at all. So he's even going to drive her to Copenhagen. The Wettbewerb in Copenhagen on the EU level for Lisa and her partner is something very special. Sind wir mit großer Spannung dabei. Also wenn Lisa auf die Reise geht, dann sagen wir, mach's gut. Und da steckt natürlich viel mehr drin als die drei Worte. Mach es gut. Janis und Eriks Sarahans from Riga are also preparing for Copenhagen. And they stay cool for a good reason. The twins will have a life-saving device in their luggage. In the hallway of their parents' narrow two-room flat, the IT geniuses work on an international career in science. This device allows to measure pulse, uh, oxygen saturation with this light sensor, which is placed on the finger, and also to get the electrocardiography with these electrodes which are placed on the chest and on the leg. So, uh, but the unique thing about this device is that uh, it uh, stores data in SD card uh, and uh, it uses uh, a phone module to send uh, data to the server and 
so allowing uh, the doctor to monitor the patient all over the world through the internet and if uh, he has example heart attack or he falls down then uh, doctor uh, receives a SMS message soldering etching circuit boards and connecting capacitors the twins have learnt it all by themselves since childhood I in was interested in electronics and I wanted to know how it, uh, everything works and uh, I used to disassemble radios and other electronic things but I never put them together back. The two brothers were brought up in a suburb of Riga. Their mother recognized their talent early on and has been supportive from day one. īstenībā viņš, nu jā, es uzskatu, ka talants ir, teiksim, piedzims cilvēki dziet, singls, jā, dziet viņi. Tas ir tāds talants, piedzims mūziķi talants, bet šī gadījumā, jā, šeit tā logiskā domāšana, tas ir talants, nu. We have a band, we, I play bass guitar and my brother play guitar, electric, and sometimes acoustic guitar. Uh, I like photographing, uh, it's uh, my hobby, and, and uh, uh, electronics is quite an uh, expensive hobby, and photographing also is an expensive hobby, so I have two expensive hobbies. <laughs> Riga, it is the capital city of Latvia. Uh, Riga is a very beautiful city and it is near to waters. And it is uh, quite uh, fun live in uh, Riga, in Latvia. Time to relax from science. Band rehearsal, once a week. Uh, I think that the fact that they are going to Copenhagen is really great uh, because they have the widest opportunity over there to get uh, well known and uh, actually somebody can see that they do really amazing stuff. That's also what Aya Luza thinks. The IT teacher is convinced of Yanis's and Eric's creative technical skills. Yeah, it's mikrokontrolieris. Viņi ir ļoti, ļoti progresējuši. Pirmkārt, jau puiši iemācījās patstāvīgi mācīties. Un otrkārt, viņi iemācījās uzstādīt savu mērķus. Copenhagen, a few days before the contest begins. It's one of the most important cities of Northern Europe and a very popular place to be. The 20th birthday party for the Young Scientist Contest is taking place just a few steps away from the harbour. Even the jury president, Jane Grimson, is excited about the big contest. I think the moment I enjoy best is just starting to, to judge, because we've been preparing for this for a number of months, we've read their submissions, we've read their proposals, and now we get to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, and that's so exciting, I really, really enjoy that. Candidate number four, Ema Jones, 14 years old from Ireland, is the youngest participant. These bamboo sticks are the secret to success in her project. At Presentation Secondary School, Ema is in her third year. Kay Mahoney is her science teacher. I always wanted to be a scientist. I was involved in a lot of science quizzes when I was in primary school and my dream was always to enter the Irish stage of the Young Scientist competition. So I was really happy when I got in and I was absolutely amazed when I won it and got a chance to be at the European contest. All right, girls, we're doing very well. We have two lab acids and two lab bases. Now we need two more, one more lab acid and one more lab base. All right, so hands up. 
Emer, can you give me one of the acids? Nitric acid. Nitric acid. And can you give me a formula for it? HNO3. HNO3. Emer's project is a sandbag shelter. This emergency accommodation can save lives after natural disasters. Emer has built an improved model on a scale of one to six. This was developed originally by Calearth and they use some barbed wire in between the layers. But um, barbed wire is heavy and expensive to transport. So my project was based on trying to substitute the barbed wire for an indigenous material. And what I came up with was two sticks used in pairs and crossed over. And this works as well as the barbed wire. And this can be seen in my model. And this ensures stability and it works just as well as the barbed wire, but it is easier to locate and easier to use. With her experimental setup, Ema can simulate earthquakes in her home garage. She is testing the stability of her models with a sledgehammer. Science teacher Kay Mahoney is convinced that the project will be successful in Copenhagen. I think the special thing about Emer's project is that it isn't being done for monetary gain, it's going to have humanitarian benefit. It's a very simple project, it's taken the design by Dr. Khalili of the sandbag shelter and made it more accessible to people. It is Emer's dream to take the European Science Contest trophy to Trali, her hometown. As well as being a young scientist, Ema plays the violin in the school orchestra. Okay, that's that's agree. So we're going three, four. Yeah. Ema is very balanced in that she has a very obvious talent in music. She obviously also has a very obvious interest and uh, talent in science. And it's wonderful to see every young person, but especially Emer, at such an early age, uh, able to accomplish all of these complementary things. Well, in Copenhagen, um, I will be meeting people with a huge interest in science like myself from every, nearly every country in Europe. They'll all have a different science project and we'll be there for a week and it'll be just really interesting. For us it is going to be a fantastic experience to go to Copenhagen and to be with all her fellow scientists from around Europe. We're just going to enjoy that, that's all. Winning is not the only objective of the candidates coming to Copenhagen. They are also there to build their own international networks. Jury member Peter Chermely is there to help. We are very much looking forward to, to see all these guys and, and all these attempts uh, to win our favour, actually. Cecilia Engel-Thomas, 19, from Denmark, has a mission. Fighting bacteria's spreading resistance to antibiotics. At the Ordrup High School in Charlottenlund, she is investigating the reasons behind it. Basically, my science project is about um, antibiotics and bacteria um, and finding yeah, new antibiotics to fight bacterial resistance, which is becoming quite a problem at hospitals. Um, so just investigating these new antibiotics called AMPs, antimicrobial peptides, um, yeah, and just seeing how they interact with bacteria and what happens. Cecilia has produced a biofilm to measure the bacteria with the help of an electron microscope. Teacher Fleming Hansen likes to network and his address book is filled with scientists from all over Europe. I think the most important thing for Cecilia here in den her konkurrence, det er selvfølgelig at møde alle de andre unge øh, forskere, som har gjort øh, gode resultater i deres egne projekter. 
Det er vigtigt at skabe sig det netværk øh, som øh, forsker og øh, øh, være i det samspil, som er mellem øh, unge mennesker, der har det talent. Practice for the competition. Cecilia is about to present her scientific results around the country. We're on a road trip around Denmark, um, visiting different high schools and talking about um, our projects and how it is to like be a young scientist and all this like being in that world and telling about it and hopefully inspiring some people to doing the same thing. Yeah, and just getting some practice for the Euro contest to you know talk about our projects and stuff like that. Og det her over, der har vi et billede af en biofilm. Og en biofilm er, hvor de laver sådan nogle mikrokolonier, og så har de sådan noget rigtig dejligt slim ud over. Um, og det er altså den måde, de fleste bakterier vokser på i naturen. If someone had asked me a year ago if I would stand here and talk to high school students, I would probably have said no way. But um, it's a great experience. And yeah, it's fun. Are you afraid or are you kind of nervous about the contest? I am, I'm not afraid, but a bit nervous because, you know, there will be a lot more people than the Danish contest, yeah. but... What about the whole point doing in English? Because I'm sure you'll do great, of course. In English? Well, yeah. um, actually, I read all the texts in English mm. and it's not really a problem, I hope, yeah. but... I was, I'm sure it won't yeah, be. when I'm I was sure. in London and talked about my project, yeah. it wasn't really a, a problem to do it in English. Science to me is like a, a huge interest, so it's something that I could spend the rest of my life doing. And yeah, it makes me happy <laughs> doing it. She's actually very good at selling her project and actually telling about the perspectives, which is always very good. You see and actually sell her project that she'll someday save the world with what she's been doing, uh, which is very interesting. And she's just, and she's so bright and very communicative, which is very good. Copenhagen is expecting the contestants. All the participants have won national competitions, and now these winners, more than 100 of them, move into a hotel for a week. But even winners encounter problems sometimes. Last 24 hours it was pure chaos, uh, because we had problems getting our posters printed. It was just about 12 when we left the coffee shop, and yeah, it was chaos, and then had to get all the stuff packed uh, at home. Uh, wasn't done as well, and yeah, it was chaos. Now our young scientists have to demonstrate their handicraft skills by building their booths. The night was short for the Latvian twins, but they are still busy with hammers and screws. I was really exhausted because last night we didn't sleep. Uh, we have some problems with, with the server. But uh, I think that we will fix that till uh, the judge. So I think that uh, everything will be okay. Emma Jones has brought her father to back her up. And Cecilia, rested and all by herself, has already finished building her stand. Last night uh, it was good. I was kind of tired, so it was nice to sleep. It's good to be, yeah, started and I have my posters and everything's almost ready. Samuel and Michelle are far from being ready. Their material box had a tough trip. Both are in shock. It is uh, arrived uh, with, uh, not with us before. And um, 
uh, we, we find it uh, now. So uh, it's not very good. We need a lot, lot, lot of time to prepare uh, how to model scale. And uh, as uh, we, didn't, we didn't have our tools, I think uh, it uh, lost uh, on, on the travel. Overtime work in the converted dance hall. While the others are getting ready for the opening, the French participants are getting desperate. The grand opening at Axelborg is about to begin. The former bank offers great ambience for a great show. And I hope that you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be exciting. And then let us together make this the best uses ever. Best of luck to you all and have a lot of fun. Thank you. The next day, all the booths must be ready today. Some are running out of time. The first jury round is in less than 24 hours. Yanis and Eriks are getting to know our other contestant teams. I saw that uh, you have like a little damage when you transported it. Yeah, it was a, a, a big uh, problem because um, um, we sent uh, all the, uh, no, a big part of the material before the before us, oh. and uh, they lost uh, our tools, um, our tool uh, box. But everything works now. Or? Not everything, but uh, the majority. <laughs> <laughs> and you? Hmm? How old are you? Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, Seventeen. Nineteen. Fourteen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, seventeen. The youngest. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Are you the youngest on the whole contest? Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay. So how you like here in Denmark? Yeah, yeah. how do you like it here in Denmark? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I haven't seen much yet because we just arrived yesterday yeah. and we're most time preparing the booth and not everything is working yet, so yeah. Um. It's really hard to prepare it. We had like poster, 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 done. <laughs> they're all really nice and their projects are all really interesting, so I'm looking forward to going around to all their stands now and finding out more. Lisa is not speculating about the winners. Uh, I can't say I haven't met enough projects yet, enough people yet to say about anything about winners. As Yanis checks out the other stands, his mood takes a hit. When arriving to this contest, I thought that we have a really good project, but now, comparing with others, I don't know if we'll get some prize. Yes, I am exhausted because we have to wake up very early and uh, we get to sleep very late. Today it's the first night and we just built up our booth and every hopefully everything's working tomorrow and I'm really excited because tomorrow it's the first day uh, the jury is coming and going around. The next morning, now it's getting serious. The first mission for jury members Jane and Peter. Together with 15 other colleagues, they will have to select the winners. The proposals come from all the different areas of science and engineering, including uh, humanities and social sciences. So it's a challenge because you have to compare apples and oranges, or maybe it's even apples and potatoes. But uh, you, you get, you get you, you, the really good projects have something special. Uh, it doesn't really matter what, what your discipline is and what the student's discipline is. You get the sense that there's something really special, something exciting. The first jury members are already on their way. But Samuel and Michelle are still working on their sunflower project. 
this will work. There is just uh, one electronic card who won't work. Uh, we think it will work uh, later in, uh, in the week. I think if we have all our tools, it, uh, it, uh, will, be fast. it will be faster. It will be okay. <laughs> Yeah, the jury is going to be on the way now shortly, so um, I think I'm prepared, so I'm just looking forward to doing my best and see what happens. I'm very excited, yeah. Small bit nervous, but I think that's good. We have uh, good competitors, so we need to be strong. I feel a little bit nervous and my hang hands are a little bit shaking. They think that it's normal and I hope uh, nothing will go wrong. The time has arrived for the jury inspection. Who has brought the most extraordinary science project to Copenhagen? Jane, the jury president, walks over to the twin stand. Good morning. I'm Jane Gunson from the jury. I'm Janis. Uh, Hello. Eric. Hello. Hi. Well, would you like to tell me about your project? Yeah. So our project is about cardiovascular system monitoring. Mm -hmm. We made like system that works uh, everywhere in the world. Where is a GSM? Card? They seem to have. Uh, done an awful lot of very basic engineering, basic electronics in order to get a working system and the idea of integrating it with the mobile phone and so on, it's a very uh, very innovative uh, idea, huge amount of work uh, and, and I think they've thought through the, the, the project quite, quite carefully and I think they've recognised that these type of devices will be very, very useful in the future, so a very, very nice project. These kind of uh, remote uh, monitoring devices are very, very important in, in healthcare now because... I think it was great. I think he, she liked our project, so I think the results will be good. I hope so. Peter Chermely on his way to the youngest participant, Ema Jones. I have met your project and I was really interested in, in, in meeting you. How did you come into to the idea at all? I always liked engineering from a very young age and structures and um, I wanted to do a project that would interest me. Right. And also um, there have been a lot of natural disasters in the past five or ten years that I'd be aware of. So I wanted to do a project that could help those people, kind of a humanitarian project. Now obviously uh, we are not usually listening about the, the age of the contestant, but, but now we have to observe that, that this girl is only 14 years old. I was, I was really happy to talk to her and, uh, and I really hope that, that this, this can go uh, or, or uh, put to practice. I found that if you use two sticks uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and if you and cross question, them in yeah. pairs, that it worked very well. Well, yeah. congratulations, it was great Thanks. to talk to you and good luck, good luck for the future. Thanks. <laughs> I was prepared for the questions that he asked me, so that was great. He's very nice and very interested and yeah, it went very well. A lot is going on now in Copenhagen. For the contest's 20th birthday celebration, some special guests have arrived and a gathering at the Copenhagen Biocenter. Among them is one of the winners of the very first EU contest back in 1989. Lina Tomasella from Asaggio, Italy. Today she works as an astrophysicist. It is really marvelous uh, to meet uh, these young uh, uh, people uh, with uh, uh, very brilliant minds. Uh, it is really an um, incredible experience. It's like time has not passed for me, and so really I am very happy to be here. Only the French boys didn't make it here. They still have problems to solve. When did you win the contest? Uh, it was uh, the first edition of the contest. It was in uh, 1989, 20 years ago. Uh, the contest was in uh, Brussels, and it uh, was not so big as, uh, as now. It was only a European, a strictly European uh, context, and it was a marvelous experience, uh, obviously. So what, like, when you won first prize, what did it like, give you? Of course, you got all the money, but did you, like, what did you use it for? Uh, I, I had some money and I used for for my studies, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, most of all uh, it was um, um, very important for um, for the self confidence. Uh. Yeah, she was at the contest the year I was born. Like, what has happened in the 20 years that has passed, and what like what did she get from the contest? What 
what did that mean to her and like just thinking like where will I be in 20 years like, do you share the room eh? Uh, between oh, different yeah. contestants like uh, 20 years yeah. ago. It was beautiful yeah. uh, to, yeah. to share the rooms with uh, other uh, people from other countries. Uh, well, I'm so. the only Irish contestant here, so I'm sharing with the girl from New Zealand. Uh, uh, because beautiful. she's the only New Zealand contestant as uh, well, so it's nice. Mm -hmm. But actually, you don't spend much time on the room because the <laughs> many of you sleep there. <laughs> yeah. These young people are so enthusiastic and so, and so beautiful project that perhaps uh, the winner uh, will be in, uh, in this group. So I think it is very important for the European community to have this uh, uh, meeting between uh, young uh, minds and uh, I think it will be uh, even in the future uh, perhaps uh, bigger than, uh, than, uh, than now and uh, I'm sure that it, it will be really a marvelous experience uh, for the uh, young people of the future. Samuel and Michelle missed out on meeting Lisa. After long working hours, they got a little bit too comfortable. We work a lot uh, because uh, nothing was working. Uh, and uh, after the lunch, uh, we have a little time and uh, we were going sleeping and uh, we already sleep. <laughs> so we, we missed the bus. It's already afternoon. The candidates await the next jury round. The French stand is finally up, but the mood is not. It's exciting because uh, there is not a lot, lot of time before the, the prize. We like to uh, uh, win, but we, we think we have not very lot of chance, but we hope. <laughs> hi. hi, guys. Hi. 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 So, so, tell me about your project. It's a system which allows to a solar panel to follow the sun path mm -hmm. uh, and of course to optimize the energy production. It's very impressive that they managed, in spite of the fact that they lost their toolbox coming here, that they were there managing to get the wires connected and doing the best, best they possibly could to get it going. So it's a, it's a nice demonstration of, uh, of, of the sun and the effect of the sun, so really well done I think. The last morning. Today, the winners of the 20th contest will be announced. While Yanis is looking for his suit to wear to the grand award ceremony, Cecilia is waiting for the jury. I'm excited and a little bit bored, I must admit, because you just sit around waiting and it's very like nerve-wracking that you don't know. You don't know if it's good or bad that no jury members come and yeah, it's yeah, nerve-wracking, that just not knowing is really, ah, uh, I hate it, yeah. Jury member Peter is starting the last round. Hi, Cecilia. Hi. How are you? My name is Peter. Nice to meet you. I'm good, thank you. What I liked in the project, that, uh, that, that, that was a good and original idea. So, association of biofilms, what, what she's examining uh, with, with resistance, it's, it's a very well-known uh, problem in, in medicine. Uh, what, was, what was the strength of her, of her work, that it was very sure that, that she did the work herself. Lisa is also waiting for her last evaluation. Well, I'm nervous because like, I don't know what it's going to be like when we're talking to the jury. Will she take a prize back home? Certainly everyone has chances, so, uh, well, I, I, I hope they, have, they will have chances, yeah. In a well-hidden room without windows, the jury members discuss in secret. These science experts are about to change the lives of some of the young contestants. Yeah. Give us a short description. Please. I, yeah. don't remember it. Okay. What I did see was an extremely well-executed project, a very good piece of science done by a very good scientist. The jury was impressed with most of the candidates' extraordinary skills. Well, at the moment I'm quite nervous and excited because I know that there's uh, the jury sitting next door and they're just like, having all the decisions there. And, uh, so I'm, yeah, kind of excited. The countdown is running. Inside the hotel, preparations are moving at full speed. And how do you think it's going to be? I don't know. I think it's going to be great. 
the prince is coming to the prince. I think Helia Santa is coming. Yes? Yeah. Are you ready? No, no, not really. <laughs> Over to the twins' room. Hopes are running low. I think that we don't have any chance. The best will get those grand awards. It's nothing, nothing for us. But it's okay. Yeah. We had a really good time here, and that's the thing. That's like a prize. The grand ceremony is taking place in Europe's oldest circus building, right in the center of Copenhagen. The big moment has arrived. Who will be named the best young scientists in Europe? Three third prizes, three second, and three first prizes will be awarded. I'm a bit excited, but it's great to like be here at the exhibition and at the competition. I'm not expecting anything else. I had a great week, and that's what I wanted. The first third prize winner, or winners, are from France, Etienne Lalique and Axel Talon. The second third prize goes to the twins Eriks and Yanis Saharans from Latvia. The third third prize winner from Belarus is Alexandra Minet. We were really excited and actually we didn't thought that we'll get the prize. Being on the stage it was really exciting. My feet were like uh, shaking and I, it was hard to stand. The first second prize winner is Emma Jones from Ireland. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I didn't expect to get anything at this contest at all. I mean, just to be here was absolutely amazing, but yeah, I'm stuck for words. I don't know what to say. David Witkowski from Germany and Michael Mika from the Czech Republic were the other second prize winners. And the winner of the first prize is from the United Kingdom, Elizabeth Muller. From Slovakia, Martin Czech. From Poland, Magdalena Boyarska. It's over. The French boys go home empty-handed, but they're solid sportsmen. Yeah, I'm a little sad uh, because um, I work a lot on the project. It's like it. <laughs> Lisa and Cecilia didn't make it to the podium for the final awards, but are happy anyway. I think it was a great night, a great ceremony, and just being here is just great. And... Yeah, it's so sad. This is the last night. I feel great. We just won a special award. It is a trip to America just to join another comp competition and we can enter our project there. So, yeah, that's quite cool. It's one week in Texas next uh, April. And, yeah, that's pretty cool.